Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny here. So today I want to talk about the two main indicators that I'm watching like a hawk going into February and why I'm watching those indicators. So basically, I just want to make sure that we can stay risk on going into February and into early March. I do indeed think that we're going to have a pause or a little bit of a retracement in that kind of time frame. And this is just based on just overlaying the S&P and previous V-shaped corrections. Um, it's playing out as planned. Uh, if you kind of overlay those uh, previous uh, timeframes, uh, you know, since the 1900s. So with that, I still think that there's going to be a little bit of retracement and a pause. But, you know, I still think we're risk on right now. So with all that said, what are the indicators that I'm looking at? That's one. And then two, um, definitely want to talk a little bit about Tesla today. Uh, and just the fact that, you know, a bunch of my favorite investors and analysts have upgraded their price targets by a lot and whether or not I feel the same way. So let's just go ahead and get into it very quickly. So the first thing I want to talk about is Israel. And you're like, hey, Kenny, why Israel? Well, they've become the leader in the world in COVID-19 vaccines. And you say, how do they do that? It says right here, order early, pay a lot. So that is how Israel became the leader in the world's COVID-19 vaccination drive, reaching nearly 15% of the country's 9.3 million population is about two weeks. So if you guys haven't been following my channel, the MIT boys are calling for 70% herd immunity for it to be effective. So what essentially they're saying is if you have 30% of the population already infected, you only need 40% vaccination rate, right? And these guys have done it so fast. Let's continue. The first big decision was paying a premium to get early vaccines. Israeli authorities have not publicly said how much they paid for the vaccines, but Pfizer, the German biotech company. Uh, but one of the officials said on the condition of anonymity that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government was paying around $30 per vaccine dose, which is about twice the price abroad. Pfizer said in the statement it uses tiered pricing. Anyways, to finish, it says, we are a small country and I knew for a fact that we better be the one and the first on the ground because after the vaccine is developed, the companies, commercially speaking, wouldn't even look in our direction to countries that are Israel's size. So, well, another thing that I want to cover here is they have universal health care, so they're not paying for these vaccines. Um, or I don't know. I'm assuming that they don't pay for it or it's, you know, uh, addressed somewhere else. Um, point is, if we take a look at the charts, so this is a data explorer from our world in data. As you can see, this linear, uh, I'm use linear, right? So this is Israel. This is the daily new vaccination. So look, this is, this is the U.S. vaccines, right, on the bottom here. Look at Israel, guys. Guys, guys, they're getting there. They are up there. Um, and then if you say, okay, so why? Well, this is why it's also important. Look at the case counts. I mean... So if you look at these case counts, they're, they're almost going logarithmic here and leading the U.S. right now in case counts. But again, if we go back here, sorry, if we go back here, you can see they definitely have a huge separation in how far they are in terms of vaccine. So what I am doing is definitely watching this because now that we're starting to get that herd immunity in Israel, if for some crazy reason in the next two or three weeks, this number does not indeed do this, if it stays on this trajectory like this, then that is a huge sign to me that we might not be turning the corner as fast as I think we're going to. I think by my estimates and the MIT boys' is estimates, because I'm not that smart, that you know July we should start getting back to normal. But if this keeps going parabolic, I'm going to have to change that thesis. So that's indicator number one. That's what I'm looking at. Um, just kind of uh, something that I've been tracking in terms of, uh, you know, just kind of taking a look at how things might progress. And, you know, if you say that, oh, yeah, but Kenny, it's so detached from the economy. No, I agree. Stock market is just detached from the economy. But if you look at discretionary retail money, which is where I think the cyclical uh, kind of money is going to be leading next. Um, if you want to follow that money, then you definitely probably want to take a look and see if this is going to recover. Because if this doesn't, or there's problems with this recovery, you know, suffice it to say, it's probably going to happen in the larger country, countries as well. So with that said, let's go to indicator number two. And this one's an easy one. So it's just straight up the VIX, right? So if you don't know what the VIX is, it's the volatility index. But the one thing I want to showcase right here is so we are on the one hour uh, window right now. And so since May, believe it or not, um, 
Well, let's just say we have a declining VIX, which is generally good and it's generally a sign for risk on. But the problem is every time we've gotten to this uh, 21, 21 VIX right here, this red line, I'm calling it, literally calling it the red line. We seem to just want to spike back up and play back down and spike back up and play back down. Obviously, this one was a little bit crazy, but uh, we were looking like we might punch back down through here. But nope, a little bit of a spike because of what happened probably in Washington. Right. And now we're back down to 21. My point is, if we break through here, it's a definite sign for risk on, especially if we get down to 15 or 10. That's an absolutely declining VIX. And I think 2021 will be very, very bullish. Now, if this does not break in this next month going into February, indeed, if we see it like get back into the 30s somehow, that is a big, big red flag for me. So I just wanted to kind of make this visible. This is very easy for you to track. It's just the VIX index on the S&P. So you can definitely just go ahead and track this yourself. But it's definitely something I'm looking at. This red line here at 21 is a big deal for me. Uh, and so, you know, just kind of monitor this and watch this because, you know, if this just falls through right here, definitely a signal for risk on. Okay, so my final thing, final thoughts. <laughs> Tesla, $880 after hours right now, 880. And at, during my last valuation, I did say we were looking at 540 as a standard traditional valuation. I never set a Redcliffe research score on it because I am not comfortable with the multiple that you would need to assign to Tesla to make that work. It would be absolutely overfitting my data and my model doesn't properly uh, express that yet, which is what I'm working on. It's actually, Tesla is actually the in-sample data that I'm working towards to make this work right. The problem is, you know, we got Chamath coming in here and calling it an energy company now. It's like, don't even worry about the cars. The cars are just like, whatever, it's going to be energy. Uh, you got other folks on YouTube coming in, like, you know, really legit folks that aren't like people who are shilling stuff coming in at 1500 and stuff. So with all that said, what do I think? Guys, I'm telling you, I like this as from a sentiment-driven, rich story, narrative, Elon Musk, whatever. I love it. I love this. Okay, so this is not me being like, hey, get off, get off your little rock. Stop being old, Kenny. No, I mean, I was a Bitcoin bull when it was 400. So you can't talk shit about me not being a bull or not, be, not leaning into things. But no matter what numbers I give them credit for. And so this is why uh, obviously my model cannot do this. So you should definitely look at other folks. But I'll tell you, I have tried to give him like full credit for like being the number one leader in just like everything and slaying all the bears. And I still can't get, I mean, I can get maybe to a thousand if I'm generous, but I'm definitely, I can't get, I can't get to a $2,000 valuation, not in a five year cycle. like. I mean, per, people putting 10% in perpetuity for, for their DCFs, and I'm just like, what in the holy, you know? So anyways, <laughs> this is just my thought. So whatever you do, like, I think I've been generally really good about pretty average into normal stocks to pretty high growth stocks and hyper growth stocks. But when it comes to Tesla, I've been almost wrong every step of the way. So do not listen to me about Tesla, but I will tell you that, uh, it's not that I don't want to change my mind. I want to be all in. Um, and I'm definitely have a new strategy for getting my position back into Tesla because I'm not going to let this ride out without me. Um, but suffice it to say that I'm not entering right now. And uh, we are going to definitely wait. Uh, but that said, man, really interesting, really crazy story. This is, I will tell you, this is not just once in a lifetime. This is like once in a like generations like I don't think you see anything like this for a long time if this is super successful I mean hell I don't know maybe we get to Mars because of Elon maybe we get new kinds of freaking crazy stuff but at this point that's what you guys are evaluating this at and maybe you will maybe it's one of those ones where like like America you just become like the talent magnet right so Tesla might become that so once you start poaching all the talent you know who, who else works on what right you know, it's the same thing with Amazon and Google and all that stuff, having all that talent on the bench, just sitting there waiting for it. So, hey, so that's it for today's video. But if you all have a video that you really want me to do, the latest one that I saw was Palantir. I could probably do a Palantir video, but uh, uh, kind of bored of that one, but I can do it again. But if you all have any ideas, especially my OGs in the chat, 
I'm looking at you. If you guys got any ideas for videos, give it to me because I'm just generally interested in checking out new stuff that I haven't seen before. Uh, on the top of my list right now is Palantir and Enphase. So let me know if those are the two that you do want to see. But if not, put in the comments what you want me to see. And I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you.